The goal of the Wildflower Center is to promote the conservation and, and use of wildflowers and other native plants in a lot of different floristic regions come into Texas from different directions. Well, right here in central Texas, all, what we, all these what we call eco-regions converge in Austin, and so we have a very, very diverse flora, some 2,600 different species of native plants. So it was an ideal place to establish a native plant botanic garden for just that reason. As you're coming in, you see aqueducts on the right up overhead, and those are um, were inspired by the Spanish aqueducts um, that you see used often in the missions and in other areas. San Antonio has some wonderful examples of that. collect rainwater from the roofs of the surrounding buildings and then it runs up this aqueduct and it's held in the front cistern when you first walk in. It's a tower that is a water holding tank. You can open up a valve and water the surrounding beds with that rainwater that we've collected. Then as you walk up the front entrance you'll see on the left is we have our wetlands pond. plants and the fish and animals that are in the pond are all native to Texas. We have everything from different kinds of frogs that live in there and make lovely songs. Um, they're nice. You can see them a lot of the time either as adults sitting on the lily pads or you can see the tadpoles swimming around. We have mosquito fish which are small kind of minnowy looking things. They're fairly drab in color but they're small enough that they can get into little cracks and eat the mosquito larvae so we don't have any mosquito problems coming out of our pond. Um, one of my favorite things to watch on the pond is the dragonflies because they're so brilliantly colored and they're active. They chase each other around and then they lay eggs and they do these elaborate um, flying maneuvers and they're really entertaining to watch. We have turtles. I think they're on the payroll because they really show up right at 9 o'clock and they sun themselves all day. They quit at five. We're at about 289 acres. And the main garden corridor is about 16 acres of more designed gardens. And then as you work your way out, it gets into a more wild state.
what you consider a garden can sometimes, you know, be a little vague because some of our meadows are, we consider them gardens because they're cultivated. They're, you know, we tend to them, but most people wouldn't look at it and think, oh, that's a garden. It looks more, more natural. But sometimes it takes a lot of maintenance to keep something looking very natural. Mrs. Johnson was the first to give a gift of money and land to establish the Wildflower Center. And the saying goes uh, that she said, I'm going to throw my hat over the windmill, which in the Texas vernacular is I'm going to throw caution to the winds and get this program started. We get a call usually on a late Friday afternoon and that the Eagle is landing and that means that Lady Bird Johnson is on her way here and um, she, she comes and I get a golf cart ready and we like to go, we just call it botanizing and we'll get in the golf cart and roam through the gardens and out into the natural areas. Now, because she's had you know, some vision decrease, because she's 94, I tend to focus on things that either have a sense of touch or smell or some other characteristic independent of what it looks like so that she can still experience the plants but from a different perspective. lots of different sensations. There's different textures you can touch, different smells you can smell, things look beautiful. This is a really great example of a wonderful plant to smell. It's uh, Berlandiera lorata, also known as chocolate daisy, and it's a, a heavenly chocolate smell. And it actually smells like a chocolate bar. Some of the plants that have seed pods, when they're ripe and getting ready to pop open and let their seeds go out, you'll actually hear kind of a little snapping sound. That's pretty cool. The grasses kind of blowing in the wind, they'll definitely make a sound. Trees rustling in the wind, all kinds of things. right now. They're also known as the demonstration gardens. They're broken up into 23 separate plots and each plot has a different example of what you can do in your home garden with native species. There are some that are very formal for people that like things to be, you know, 
really neat and tidy. And then there are gardens that are plots that have more naturalistic settings. There are gardens that have only South Texas plants. A garden that has all good plants for nectar sources for butterflies and hummingbirds and that sort of thing so um, it, they're really just to educate the public on what they can do with native species in their own gardens people be confused by my job and yeah by explaining to them I'm cultivating I'm nurturing I'm you know getting my hands dirty I'm out in nature and I definitely kind of see a light bulb go on and they're like oh yeah that would be nice that would feel good one girl in particular I had this conversation with her and I explained what I did and the next time I saw her she told me that over the weekend she had gone to like a garden store or whatever and bought some plants and planted a few pots and she said that she was outside and she got totally sunburned and you know it was an experience that she hadn't really had before we chatted but it really did have an impact on her and it got her really excited so that was that was fun. If you look at the Wildflower Center, you'll see that there's a style that is unique to the Wildflower Center. And what we're seeing is um, mimics of vernacular Texas architecture. So the influence of the Spanish and the Germans and the early Texans and taking those ideas and learning from the original lessons that were learned and incorporating that into our architecture. architecture here is in the native vernacular so we have a German white limestone influence that you see around Fredericksburg Texas and the the red sandstone that's behind me in this irregular arch uh, is the San Antonio Spanish mission style of architecture so the architecture also reflects this area as well as the plantings in the gardens In the springtime, what Central Texas is probably best known for is the blue bonnets, part of the um, beautification program that Lady Bird Johnson started was getting the roadways to be covered in wildflowers. So throughout the garden in the spring, first you'll see the blue bonnets, then as those fade, the gallardia or the Indian blanket comes out, that's bright, they're really vibrant, really happy flowers, you know, you look at them and you can't help but smile.
One of the really great first bloomers is Damianita. It blooms yellow. It's a little shrub. It blooms yellow. And when there's a big, you know, cluster of it, it's just absolutely blinding because it's so bright. So, I mean, we have yellow, pinks, purples, blue, red. standing in it has very shallow soils and uh, a shallow soils I mean a couple of inches you know two to three inches of soil and then you hit rock um, but what's interesting about that is because of the shallow soils you also have a very interesting wildflower displays harsh environment. We don't get a lot of rainfall and the plants protect themselves in various ways through, you know, having toxic chemicals in them or having spines and thorns. You've probably seen some of the Texas prickly pear while you've been out here. So they defend themselves against herbivory or getting eaten by other animals. plants is important. They're adapted to the area that you're planting them in. You know, so all of the species that we have here are native to Texas, so they're going to be used to the long, hot spells during the summer, the dry spells. Occasionally we get a really cold snap in the winter and they're going to be able to handle that too. A lot of times if you bring in plants that aren't native to the area, you have to really soak them and water them every day during the hot summer, whereas if you use a native plant, you know, maybe once a week, basically they're just adapted to this area and this climate and they're going to survive and thrive better than bringing outside plants in. For a botanist, which I'm a kind of a classically trained botanist, this would be like living in King Arthur's court. It's kind of Camelot when it comes to plants because we have this ideal place where we use native plants in our designs and we have sustainable, uh, you know, green buildings and we, we're living lightly on the land so we're practicing what we preach. I also feel like I'm in the service of the Queen, Lady Bird Johnson, because she's responsible uh, for making millions of people aware about the benefits of wildflowers and native plants. Thank you. 